Hello and welcome to my channel. On today's video, whenever a TV box is released with a new and innovative feature to its design, you know I have to feature it on my channel. On today's review, I feature the RTV Box S10 Plus, wireless charging 4K TV box with voice remote feature. I have seen this box featured on other channels, and I can't wait to see the results I will get. So without further ado, we have a full review after a word from today's sponsor. Today's TV box is provided by GearVita.com, a new online store launched back in 2017. They have an array of electronic products ranging from cell phones and accessories, smart home devices, computers, tablets, TV boxes and even outdoor gadgets and toys. They have competitive prices and good customer service so be sure to check them out. See the link in the description area for more information. And now back to the review. Welcome back. For those of you who have already seen the S10 Plus, you would have noticed that the box has changed compared to the one I am holding. This is a new box, and the make of this box is of a higher quality than the one used in the previous version that tore very easily. Below the box you have some specifications. It shows that the CPU is the RK3328 quad-core 64-bit Cortex-A53. The GPU is the Pentacore Mali 450, running up to 750 MHz. This model comes with 4 GB of RAM and 32 GB of internal storage. And the last bit of information here is that it uses a 5 volts 2.5 amps power adapter. So I will just do a quick unboxing of the contents inside. So in the box, you get the S10 Plus TV box itself. You get this wireless voice remote. It comes with its own USB dongle, and I will see if it has air mouse features in a minute. You get one HDMI cable. A 9 volts 3 amps DC power adapter. Just a bit of correction from the box there that said 5 volts 2 amps. And a small user's manual. Let's take a look at the new feature that comes on this box. The housing of the box is made of plastic, with the S10 Plus and voice control branding to the top. Also integrated into the top is a wireless charging pad, the first of its kind to be implemented into a TV box. Before I go any further, let me test it with my cell phone to see if it works. As you can see, the wireless charger charges my phone with ease, and with fast charging capability to boot. So as I proceed with the ports. To the back. You have one HDMI port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, you get one optical audio port, one audio video port, and a DC power input jack. To the side, you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and an SD card reader. To the other side, you have two more USB 2.0 ports and a reset button. To the front, you have an LED power light. And to the bottom, you have some ventilation holes. So I will now connect it to my TV and continue with the rest of the review. So I'm back, and what you're looking at, is the box's boot up animation which takes a couple of seconds. Then it goes to the launcher. So this is the launcher. The operating system used on this box is Android TV 7.1 Nougat. It comes with a voice search bar to the top in conjunction with the included voice remote. It comes with a horizontal apps shortcuts bar that automatically adds apps to the launcher. However, it only adds Android TV apps to the bar, and not apps that were side-loaded, or non-Android TV apps. 
This launcher does not come with a navigation bar or status bar for multitasking. So I went ahead and installed all my apps to complete my review. I had to side load most of them because the apps that I normally use in my reviews cannot be installed from the Android TV version of the Google Play Store, with the exception of Ader64 and DRM information. First, let's check to see if this box is rooted. It shows that this box is not rooted, running on Android 7.1.2 Nougat operating system. When a box runs on Android TV OS, it is usually not rooted, which allows for the box to have the necessary DRM support to play Netflix in HD and 4K quality. Let's look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer of this box is Rockchip, and the model is the S10. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM, and 32GB of internal storage. What is shown here is the available RAM and internal storage after the Android operating system and apps installed on the box. The CPU is a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU running up to 1.5 GHz. Below here it shows that the box has support for both 32 and 64-bit ABIs, allowing it to run both 32 and 64-bit applications. The GPU is the Pentacore Mali 450 graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz and OpenGLES version 3.1. Under network, it shows that the box has 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi support, and the 5.8 GHz band is not supported. Under Android, it shows that the operating system is Android 7.1.2 Nougat, and it also shows that the box is not rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the box runs between 60 to 70 degrees Celsius using a passive cooling fan that I am currently using, and this can rise up to 95 degrees under wireless charging activity. Applying a passive cooling fan to this box will maintain a temperature between 60 and 70 degrees. The box comes with codecs for playing 4K videos like H.265 HEVC, and VP9 decoding, and a couple of others all needed for the playback of 4K media. However, I'm not seeing the H.264 decoder in this list. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's see what you can do on this box. First, I tried Netflix. I encountered a problem where the Netflix app just hangs and doesn't start. I tried applying the latest burn key tools to patch the Google Widevine DRM support. However, it says that it already has a burn key tools folder in its database, but it's locked in the root of the box. It would require a firmware update to fix this issue. Next, you have Amazon Prime Video. Amazon Prime Video works on this box, but be mindful, in countries that are outside of the US region, may require that you use a VPN to be able to watch movies on Amazon Prime. Next, you have the YouTube app that plays in 4K quality. Just watch as I demonstrate. Find 4K samples. The next thing you can do on this box is to play 4K videos. I ran some 4K video samples all at 60 frames per second and at various formats.
What I discovered was that with all the media players I used to play the samples, they all started off playing well, and then started having audio issues and then shaky video handling. Only 4K videos at 29.97 frames play well on this box. Another fun thing you can do on the RTV Box S10 is play Android games. I'm running two games to test the 3D graphics capability. The both games played okay, but the graphics rendering was a bit sluggish. I will now show the rest of the results I got in the DRM information and the benchmark scores. Well the DRM information shows that you have Google Widevine Level 1 support, and HDCP encryption. The benchmark scores are not that high, and the Wi-Fi speed test shows that you can get better internet speed by your Ethernet LAN connection. So, in summary, the RTV Box S10 Plus comes with a fully functional wireless charging pad with fast charging. It comes with a wireless voice remote. It has all the right ports to connect to any device. It runs on Android TV, with DRM support for YouTube and Netflix to play in 4K. It can play certain 4K videos quite well, and gaming is good for low-end games. On the downside, the box is not rooted. It needs a firmware update to fix a Netflix issue. It struggled to play 4K video samples at 60 frames per second. The benchmark scores are a bit low. It has no Bluetooth, gaming is a bit sluggish, and the Wi-Fi is single band and the speed is below average. So I've come to the end of my review of the RTV Box S10 Plus 4K Android TV Box. If you are interested in this device, links can be found in the description area below this video and on my website so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video, share it on social media, it helps grow my channel, and subscribe to my channel for more TV Box Stop videos.